Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my new tutorial. And in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to create something similar to these reflections in my fourth speed intro. Uh, so, to start things off, if you just don't really care about uh, watching this tutorial and learning something, you can just download the project file with the link in the description. Uh, the link will be to the speed intro, and you can download it from there. Alright, so uh, I'll just be showing you how to create these reflections and probably the best way to do it. So let's jump right into it. We'll create a new composition and just call it Tutorial. Okay, and 15 seconds and 720p, 25 frames per second, and let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is get our text tool and type our text. So we'll just type uh, Tutorial, I guess. Alright, now what we want to do is, doesn't need to be centered too much. Uh, we want to pre-compose this, so go layer, pre-compose, and we'll call this text editor. Alright, now we want to duplicate this pre-composition, so we can press Control D or edit, duplicate. Now we want to get the bottom one and make it a 3D layer. If the 3D switch isn't here, which is this little cube, uh, press F4 or click down here to toggle the switches and it should switch between the two. So now that it's a 3D layer, press the rotation key, which is R, and it'll bring up all these rotation options. So you want to pretty much mirror this. So you want to rotate it on the Y axis uh, 180 degrees, so it's like that. And now we want to spin this around 180 degrees as well. So Y and Z both 180. Alright, so we want to rename this bottom composition like do not edit. Or this is the reflection in other words. So what we want to do is highlight this bottom one again and get the rectangular tool and pretty much create a mask like that. Now double tap M to bring up all the mask properties and change add to subtract. And this way it cuts off everything except for that top little part. Now we want to get the mask feather and drag it up not too much, uh, about 75 is pretty good. Alright, and then we want to get the opacity and drag that down to say 60. Okay, so it should be pretty clear what's happening so far, but if you're not used to using pre-compositions, I'll explain it in just a moment. What we want to do now is highlight both of these layers uh, by just dragging or holding shift to select both of them, and go layer pre-compose, and we'll call this text1. Alright, so now that we have our first text here, what we can do is start to make our background. So go lay a new solid and we'll call this background. Now, I recommend you name every single layer you create and that way it's just easy to keep track of things and it's a good habit to get into. So I'm just going to use a ramp in the effects and presets here. And this is pretty much just a gradient uh, if you use Photoshop. So we'll create something like that and I like to do something very simple so light silver to a darker silver and that way it's just a kind of semi-professional looking background anyway so now that we've got this in here we can make it a 3d layer and rotate a little bit and there we go now I'm gonna repeat the same process but with an image and I'll uh, do this a bit faster and won't run through it as much so here's an image I made and for images I just make it full screen or thereabouts um, Alright, so once our image is in there, we go, we select our image, layer, pre-compose, and we'll call it image editor, and then what we want to do is scale the pre-composition down like that, move it up a bit, duplicate it, turn the bottom one to 3D, and make the bottom two values 180 degrees, and then move this down. Now again, we want to create a mask. And then bring up the mask properties, subtract 60% of opacity, and feather it out a bit. Another cool thing you can do is blur the reflection, and that makes it look a bit cooler, but I won't worry about that in this. So we pre-compose those bottom two, and we'll call it image one. Make that a 3D layer, and rotate it the opposite way, and move it across. Now the final thing I'll talk about is these reflection lines here. So as you can see, this reflection starts about here, and this one starts down here you pretty much want to make sure they line up perfectly because that's essentially the floor level and it's going to look a bit weird if they're not lined up so that's probably close enough there so that's pretty much how I created those uh, reflections and now if we go back into our text editor so double click to open pre-compositions 
uh, we can pretty much change this to anything we want and then if we go back to our original composition you can see it updates that and the reflection and it all lines up perfectly still and that will work with the images as well so thanks for watching hope you learned something if you did uh, make sure you check out my other videos and feel free to subscribe and like the video and I'll see you next time